In Diablo 2, there is a massive arsenal to choose from weapon-wise, but one of the most interesting but sadly underutilized is the bow, which due to its nature as an ammo-based weapon lends itself to some interesting design potential, while most people mistake bows as being strictly Amazon weapons and the Amazon uniques do contain bows themselves, the reality is the bow in Diablo 2 has a fairly long history of being the source of interesting niche and challenge build types across most of the classes, and also a really strong main choice for the Amazon. Amazon, of course. Now before we dive in, if you want to see the Amazon exclusive bows, there is a link at the end of this video for the full list of Amazon exclusive uniques. Though for now, let's dive into the truly old school weapons with the normal difficulty unique bows. Starting with Pluckeye, we have a plucky little bow that has okay stats for its level but doesn't do anything exceptionally amazing. The core design is a mana bow, which you'll often see as a tool for mage zons, and that will become a thing as we get further in, but due to this one's low damage, the only real benefits you're getting with this bow are the two mana per kill, since the enhanced damage is insignificant on a short bow, and the attack rating is quickly outclassed. That said, it could be upgraded to exceptional for a mage zon, but with insight coming to bows, it won't be worth the cost upgrade, and you can usually find something much better. After that is Wither String, an actually worthwhile low level bow for any character who wants to use it. While it won't see use outside of normal, mostly due to its pitiful damage, the ability to fire magic arrows is a very welcome tool early on to save money on arrows, and with the increased attack speed mod on it, and actually can fire reasonably fast compared to other bows. This isn't end game gear, but I could use this easily into Act 3 or 4 until really feeling the need to upgrade it. Then we have Ravenclaw, something I often refer to as Kuko Jr. This bow is interesting since it's our first bow that actually has common use among non-Amazons, mostly due to the explosive arrow effect. And while it doesn't do a lot of damage normally, it pairs especially well on low-level ranger paladins and bow sorceresses working their way through normal and even into nightmare. Its major drawback is that its damage falls off pretty quick, but it is still an upgrade from most of our previous bows, and at only level 15 requirement is usable pretty early. Breaking the level 20 requirement, we have Rogue's Bow, one of the better normal bows since it packs a number of nice mods, such as Deadly Strike, which helps compensate for its relatively low base damage, as well as Resist All, massive attack speed boosts, and some bonus damage to Undead, not to mention a small bump to attack rating. It's not great upgrade fodder, but it will easily hold you over until you're able to get the supplies for an Insight in Nightmare, or even possibly, maybe at a Stretch Harmony. Storm Strike is another interesting bow. This one is more one that I favor for early Mage Zons, thanks to the natural piercing, which does add to your own. So while early on you won't be able to spam your freezing or exploding arrows, this bow can help you get much more out of them. That combined with the okay damage for a normal bow between physical and lightning, as well as giving you at least some of the most important normal difficulty resists, and it makes a relatively safe pick, though you will be a decent bit into normal before you can actually start using it. After that, we have Wither String's big brother, Wizendraw. Again, okay damage for normal difficulty, combined with attack rating, cold resist, and even a bit of cold resist piercing that is really uncommon at this level. And it is a sneaky way to get that function on a low level sorceress as well, since it packs magic arrows. For anyone other than the Amazon, it makes a very nice pick up and play kind of bow. Though on the Amazon, it does give your cold arrow options early on a bit more kind of punch because of that piercing cold. I'd probably rate this one as the biggest normal difficulty sleeper weapon out of all the bows. Next we have Hellclap, a bit better minimum damage than the last couple bows, but still a fairly standard this is a fire weapon setup, with a chunk of fire damage that is decent enough for normal, okay attack speed, as well as plus to fire skills and fire resist. It's basically what you'd expect if they pretty much just copy pasted some of the fire swords over to the bow line. The last of the normal bows is Blast Bark, which is seems like it would be better than it is, but considering how late you'll start finding it in normal, it's quickly outclassed by our later options. That said, it's still not a bad bow for a low level mage zone since it does enough damage to at least get some of the mana from the leech, albeit not enough for spamming yet, and also plus to Amazon skills and a tickle of exploding arrow on top of it. As we move into the exceptional, we start to see the more interesting design changes brought with the expansion, starting with a fairly underestimated Sky Strike, which is a good bow to find in late normal and early nightmare since it has decent mods that we like to see on bows, such as speed, okay damage, thankfully buffed by lightning, as well as attack rating and Amazon skill bumps for a little extra love. It is also our first chance to see a chance to cast bow, this time with meteors, though generally you'll only rarely see it actually hit an enemy because the meteors take so long to fall, it is fun for the fireworks. Next is Rip Hook, where we start to see the damage of the unique bows finally start to perk up a little bit in our early nightmare drops. This is a pretty underestimated bow for solo cell found runs because it has some really nice mods, with 
Okay enhanced damage, slow target, open wounds, life leech combined with solid speed due to the base bow type and mods. It does have to compete with some pretty strong rune words, but if you're lucky enough to find this drop, you could put off farming for an insight or harmony for a bit longer. After that is Kuko Shikaku, a bow with a rather cool history in the game, at one time being part of one of the most overpowered sleeper builds in the game until the trick with it was patched out. This bow at first looks fairly basic, decent damage with extra fire on top of that as well as points in Amazon bow skills and immolation arrow. What makes it special, and still does for rangers and bow sorceresses, is that it fires explosive arrows combined with the piercing attack. And we will see that combo be important in crossbows too. This is because your fire damage is added to the explosion, so you can probably see why this is a common pick for holy fire paladins and enchantresses as a ranged weapon option. The pierce makes it so that you can have even more of these explosions as well. Following that though is the comparatively disappointing Endless Hail, which is just an okay damage bow with a pinch of cold mod slapped on it. It does give you plus strafe, so it can be semi helpful there, but it really doesn't add enough of anything to really stay stand out from just getting a good magic or rare bow, and usually those will give you even more bonuses. Which Wild String thankfully pulls us back into the realm of interesting bows, this one being a bow that I will sometimes even use on Act 1 rogues until I can make a Lawbringer for an Act 5 mercenary or happen to find a Reaper's Toll. This is because this bow packs a chance to cast Amplify Damage on Striking, which really helps out a number of characters. This combined with the bow actually doing okay damage for where you'd get it, and having Deadly Strike percent on top of that would make it a solid choice regardless. But wait, there's more. This thing has 40% resist all, magic arrows, and another two sockets on top. While this bow is not best in slot, it is definitely slept on a lot whenever it shouldn't be. This is the first of the unique bows that can actually compete with some of the budget rune word bows. Going down the list, we have Windforce Light, known as Cliff Killer. This is when we see bows start to get another spike in damage, though unfortunately the other mods on this don't quite make it exceptionally great, just good enough, with its main flare being pretty much just being knockback and plus skills, which is a bit underwhelming compared to some of the earlier and far more interesting designs, so basically it's not a bad bow, it's just boring. A bow that's not nearly as boring though is Mage Wrath. Maintaining reasonable damage and attacking slightly faster, it also packs a number of interesting mods for a mage Zon, since it has proper mana leech unlike the previous contenders, and also has points for guided arrow and blind. And while it does lack too much beyond that, this is enough to give you one of your first unique options for a proper ice maiden or fire maiden setup, though I sadly see it getting less attention when 2.4 releases due to the other easier to get options such as insight. The last of the exceptionals is Gold Strike Arch, another sleeper bow, oddly enough. While the first Fist of the Heavens can be kind of fun for a fireworks show, and even fun in undead areas to an extent, this bow is actually underestimated a lot. It packs reasonable damage boosts with a massive increase in attack rating and attack speed. While not super exciting, it is one of a few bows that can easily take you through the end of hell difficulty with your boas on and keep your attack speed churning along nicely throughout. As with other weapons, the elite options are a bit more limited here, but they're at least for the most part interesting, well, except our first one, Eaglehorn, which is a good weapon and is basically a weird set of mods that come down to more damage, more hit chance. That said, thanks to ignore target defense, attack rating bumps, and dexterity bumps, it is a fairly reliable weapon even though it doesn't quite have the attack speed of other options. After that we have Widowmaker, which falls into a weird space of either being adored or not even acknowledged by most players, but overall it's actually a fairly fun build for niche builds. Well, bow for niche builds. And even non-Amazon bow variants can get a decent amount of use out of it. This is because it packs magic arrows with ignore target defense, along with classless guided arrow, meaning any character can use it. And all of that with okay damage and deadly strike. Personally I like it a lot, even though I only very rarely have the opportunity to actually use it in a build. And here at the very end, we probably have the most popular bow in the game, sadly, Windforce. While it's not my number one pick for a Bozon, it is definitely up there and earns its place by punching through enemies. Even though it is fairly simple in design, with crazy high max damage for a bow, albeit underwhelming minimum damage, it packs that with okay speed for its scale, knockback, and mana leash to keep you going. While I personally prefer more speed for proc purposes, you're looking at a hard-hitting physical damage bow, this one is going to be kind of like your main go-to for that. That. 